you doing, Pippi? What you doing, Pippi? What you doing? and welcome, welcome, welcome to Miracle Farm 1927 Homestead. We are fixing to have a winter storm here in North Carolina, and but by the time you see this video, it will be over with, but because we live on the very end of where the power comes in, we always uh, lose power. And sometimes it's just for a few hours, but a lot of times it's for a few days. So, just in case you are one of the people that uh, uh, have that problem, that run out of power um, uh, during the year for different kind of reasons, or um, uh, you want to prep in case something else happens and the power is out, I just want to give you a few little tips that we use and uh, that we want to be a little bit prepared. We weren't prepared last week when it happened, so we want to be just a little bit prepared. So the first thing I will go over is candles. And the reason I'm going over candles is they are the absolute cheapest way of having light when you don't have any. And, uh, but there's different kind of candles. You got your scented candles. These would be the last ones I would get, but if you go to thrift stores and stuff, you always see candles really, really cheap. Find you a old tote or something to keep candles in because they can be real lifesavers. Now, out of all these lighting options that I'm showing you, they are the most dangerous uh, because a candle can melt on down and get onto a, a surface. But uh, these scented candles are a little safer just because they're in the glass jar. And, and they smell nice, of course, but they don't give a lot of light. I, because they're in the glass jar, I don't know what it is. They just don't give off the light of a regular taper candle or one of these little fat candles. So um, if you have these, are, these are, but the thing is you can keep these out and they look good just sitting, just sitting around. So always keep some of these. Now these last a good long time and always have a nice metal something that they're sitting on so it's not directly on the surface. And these last a good long time and they give just as much light as these do. Now the reason I wanted to show you these in this little El Cheapo carrier is these are the ones that you carry around. These are the ones that if you do not have a flashlight or your batteries are running low, this taper candle has a little reservoir down here that's made specifically for the wax of this candle so you do not burn your fingers. This one has a little bit, but this one's more bulky and it's harder to carry around. And, you know, who wants to carry this around? This has a place for your finger. This was free and I got the little carrier for 50 cents. So this, and you might put it in a drawer somewhere, put it in your junk drawer, and might not have a place to uh, leave it out all the time. But now, this time of year, where the, where the power is going on and off, this one's staying out. And right beside of it, or close by if you got children, just close by out of sight is the matches. Now my son went and he just spoiled me terribly this week, and he bought me one of these. So I am loving it. So you got your little candle that you can carry around with you. It's a very lightweight. It's in a protective uh, surface, but if it tips over, it will burn. So uh, and teach your children about these candles. I've never had any trouble with my children and candles. Uh, they respect them. They know what fire is. They grew up around fire. But if your children haven't, uh, they're going to be enamored with this light. And uh, just teach them the safety and the importance of it. And uh, 
maybe teach them how to carry it. But this is, these are the three, op some of the three options, there, there's a whole lot more than that, but this is my favorite just because I can carry it around. You can, you know, it's not going to go out and uh, it's like when you're going to the bathroom, this is your friend right here. In the middle of the night, have this beside your bed, there, there you are. You're, you're, you're ready to go. Now I want to get into my favorite way of lighting the house just because they give off more light than a candle. And I have a big collection of oil lamps just because I've always liked antiques. Some of them work really well, some of them not so well, and some of them are new and work just fine. But there's different kinds of oil lamps. Uh, these on this side are all table lamps. You are not going to take, even though it's got a nice place to hold it, you don't want to take this lamp and walk around your house with it. Several reasons. It's heavy, and when it's absolutely full of uh, fuel, it's even heavier. You've got a light going in here, and these chimneys are not the most stable thing in the world. If you turn it just a little bit, this chimney could, I mean, they easily could come off. And then you have shattered glass in the dark, and you do not want this. These are the ones that you want to set on it. You want to light them and set them on a table. In the middle of a table, uh, up on a mantle, uh, not, and they have, pl with plenty of headroom up here. So, uh, also, no playing ball in the house when these are on. Even though you might be stuck in a house because of some natural disaster, uh, we don't want these knocked over. Now, these have a nice base, and they will set nicely, and you don't have to worry so much about them turning over. And uh, this, But this, they're not made to carry around. Now, this one right here, this little tiny one, just like the candle I had earlier, has a little finger carrier. And it's made to carry from room to room. But notice it's a whole lot smaller. And it's got a very flat base to where you can sit down. Another different kind is a wall hanging one. This hangs on the wall. And it comes out of its little holder. And you, a lot of times you'll just find this part. And you'll think that that's all there is to it. But you can tell by this flat surface around here that it was once in a hole. This type is real nice to hang on your wall and so they're up out of the way and can be just as a decoration if that suits your house and uh, uh, it's a little bit easier to carry around but that's not what it's made for. These types are made to be carried. They've got the handle They've got a little uh, handle right here, but you don't carry it by that. You carry it by this one, and you can swing it. It's got a nice flat bottom. It's really stable. And this one's old, and it doesn't work. I just wanted to give you an example of the old type. And the way you light this one is it's got a little hinge right here that you lift up. To light the wick. It exposes the wick down here and that's where you would light this one. And it also has a little notch that holds it up until you've got it lit. The other thing about this one is that if you want to uh, wash the globe so you can see through it better, this top top part up here goes up, it's on a spring, and the middle, whole middle part tilts out to where you can remove that. It fits. So if you find these, these are a treasure. And uh, I, I would just keep one or two or ten for emergencies. So we'll set that one down. Now you'll notice these have all got different kind of chimneys. This one's got a more, more ornate chimney, and it's the, 
It's made to burn, but it's way thinner than some of these old ones that when you handle this, it's more like handling, handling a nice mason jar. So I wanted to show you how easy these are to light. The wick is the little white thing in here, and you use this little knob to roll it up. So we're going to take it on down and almost level with the top here. Get your match, just like you're doing a uh, candle. And then you can bring it up just a little bit. Now, what I've seen, not seen in other videos, when you bring it up this way, uh, you can't see this on the camera, but it is putting out black smoke up here. And that's because I have the uh, wick too high. So I'm going to bring, it's not, it's not meant to, it gives you more light for a minute, but when you put the chimney on, it's going to turn your chimney black. And that's not what you want. So, we're going to take it way down, and even down below the little lid. And the reason we're doing this is we're going to put the chimney on. Make sure your chimney is in all of the little holders. Now, you can bring up your flame just a little bit. And the chimney helps illuminate the uh, flame in here. Now, if you put it way up like this, it's, gonna, it's just going to blacken your chimney, and it's not go you're not going to be able to see out of it all. And if you put it too low, you don't have any light. So this wick has been nicely trimmed. It's burning just nice and fine. So I'm going to bring it up just a little bit, and then you have a good light. But all the you can watch video after video of, of uh, lighting oil lamps, but I've never seen anybody say anything about having this, having this flame too high. And, and the other thing is, is you're wasting your fuel, and you want this to burn for hours and hours and hours and hours. And that's why it's a step above a candle. So we're going to set this one to the side and always use two hands. And if you've got your flame at a good level like this, you can usually, I like to hold the very bottom of the glass. Don't hold it up here because it's hot. Just because I'm going to move it. I take the neck of it and hold the glass and we're safely move it out of the way. Now, if you didn't know what I meant by black and glass, here's an example. No lights coming through. The, I mean, very little light. And what happened, it was not because my wick was too high. It's because the wick needed to be trimmed. It's built up carbon. It's totally black. It's black down. Gosh, that's a... The wick is just in bad shape, and that needs to be trimmed off. Normally, you don't have to trim this much off of them. This one just happens to be in bad shape. So we're going to give it a little haircut. Well, let me show you how badly it uh, burns. Give it a little... It's just rolling out the black smoke. Now let me turn it down like it would be in the... In the uh... Well, it's going to make me a liar. But you can see that the uh, fire is dancing. And when I had it on earlier, it just completely went out because the a wick is so bad. So I'm going to go ahead and blow this out. 
It doesn't even want to go out. It's burning all down where it's not supposed to, not just on the wick. <sighs> this mechanism is really getting old. It's really hard to turn. And the thing is, you can get an antique lamp like this and change all of this up here. Uh, when these little wheels right here are the first thing that goes out on them. Now, the older ones are better. You know, just like everything else, something that's made 75 years ago is better than something made last week. And this is hot, but I'm going to go ahead and trim it. Now, there's all different ways of trimming this. You can trim it into a point. You can trim it straight. You can trim it into two points. I've, I've seen people do it all different kind of ways. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off about how much you would normally take off of one. Probably just about an eighth of an inch. And I like to do mine at a little crescent. Now, let's see how this one burns now. I'm going to borrow a chimney off another one that is not blackened. We're going to bring it on down. Remember I told you that your wick will be down below when you're trying to put your chimney on. And we'll take it down just a little bit more. Now we're going to bring it up where it's supposed to be. Now that is burning a whole lot better. But like I said, you can, you can uh, trim your wick any way you want to. You can experiment with them and, and have the different designs in it. I just like the little crescent. It's the same shape of the little holder. So that works out and that's what was wrong with this. This is just black. I mean, there's nothing left of it. It's hard. It, it just hadn't been trimmed. We probably use this one the most. It's got a real nice wide heavy base and uh, it's mostly full of oil. So I know it's just one we've used a whole lot. So it's not smoking or anything and burning clean. And uh, this is what you want to see. So we'll set him to the side. Now these lamps have all different kind of ways of, let's see, here is an old lamp, an antique lamp. That I had to put a new mechanism on. It looks fancier, but it's, you know, made recently so that tells you all you need to know. So we'll unscrew this. Okay. Oh, I should have took this off first. Let's take the chimney off first. And you don't want to pour this, pull your nasty old wick out. Unless you're outside and you have a nice grassy place, that's why I recommend doing all this. So we're just going to lay it to the side and because this is a new wick and it's nice and long, it's going to hang there just, just nicely. So you can get clear lamp oil. Got this at a yard sale. Always keep out on the yard sale and thrift sales for lamp oil. Because this is the less smelly if you put anything else in these, which you're not really supposed to like kerosene oil, it, it just smells so much. And this, these have been 
uh, more refined and it was made for inside of houses. But because this is an old antique lamp and it's red and some of the color is coming out of it, I got some uh, red oil. So we're going to put our little funnel on here. And we're going to top her off. If you're doing it in the house, you're going to have drips, so do it on top of your newspapers. Now this one has a receiver where it's got the female end down here and the male end is on the little uh, mechanism that draws up the wick. So we got to, it's a little bit rusty. So it's a little hard to get on there. There it goes. Went on there nicely. So this one's all full already. Replace your chimney. The wick looks okay. It's just burnt just a little bit at the top. If you were particular, you might want to do a little shaking. But there it is, all ready to go. And let's light this up and see how what it looks like. It's a popping and a cracking a little bit. It went out. Oh, well, let's give her a trim. It obviously is worse than it looks. I'll bring it up just a little bit more so I can get my little crescent on there. There we go. Bring it back down. The wicks are something that you can buy and replace. And in your good old neighborhood, hardware stores is the place to find them. You can order them online, but you know how we are. Shop local, help out your neighbor. So now it's not popping and cracking. The, uh, Flame went way up. We're going to take it down below the surface here. Put our chimney back on. I go like from the side over. This has got a totally different holding mechanism. And then we're going to, it's just been washed, so it's been, uh, it's got a little steam in there, which is fine. I'm going to bring it up just a little bit. You can see him better right here. And now he's all lit up. Now this one's just a little bit different. It, it has the holding mechanism built in, the glass. So the little uh, wick holding part just screws down in there, just like the other one. And if you're, uh, I didn't show you this, in the bottom, that's where you bring your wick up. You just figure out which way it's bringing it up, and you feed it through your little hole when you get a new wick. And when you're uh, putting a new wick in, I'd let it soak for about an hour to soak up uh, the kerosene your lamp oil. This one's also antique, so it's taking a little pushing to get it on there. All right, this one looks good. Let's see if I'm right. Oh yeah, it's burning good. We're going to take it down below the surface. If you'll notice, when I put it on, I'm going to take it down a little bit more. 
when you put the chimney on, it actually makes the flame go a little higher. And it reflects. And there you go. Not only do these give out light, they give off a little bit of heat. So if you're in a situation where you don't have any power and you don't have a wood stove or any other kind of auxiliary heat, close up one small room of your house. Get all your good books that you need to read. Uh, get caught up on homeschooling. Uh, whatever you need to do, but keep this room closed. Put your oil lamps in there for your light and not only will they be giving you some light, they'll give, be giving you a little bit of heat and possibly keep you above freezing. And don't forget to get your long johns out, your sweatpants, your wool socks, your uh, uh, gloves. Don't be caught uh, with your pants down. Don't be caught, don't be walking around your house in your shorts. That's ridiculous. If you're walking around your house in your shorts, you got your heat up too high and you're wasting energy. And that's not the kind of, that's not the kind of person you want to be. You want to leave the heat down. Wear your winter clothes. It's fun to wear your winter clothes. You only get to see them once a year and put on your layers and layers so that uh, when you go outside, it's not such a great big shock on your body. That's why people get so sick. So uh, these are just a few uh, ideas and ways to light up your house. Uh, I'm going to be showing you uh, around the house just a little bit, some other little things that we've done. But just to help you out, uh, uh, and please, if you've got any ideas for me, I'll, I'd love to have more ideas of how to conserve energy, how to light up the house, uh, how to cook. Uh, uh, I don't know how people just live on bread and milk, but they must do because that's what goes out. And water? Are you kidding me? You go get all the water out of the store. Don't you have spigots the day before? So we'll be showing you a little bit of that in just a little while.